All right, let's get started. Um, welcome to SL Linux Fun with MySQL and Friends. As you can see, I'm missing a co-speaker. Uh, Ivan unfortunately couldn't make it today. He's in South America and he couldn't get approval to come here. But he did help me prepare these slides, so we left his name on there. Uh, so quickly, who we are. Uh, my name is Matthias Krauels. I live here in Belgium. I live in Ghent. Uh, I'm a bachelor in computer science, been a Linux user and admin for over 20 years. Then I've been a PHP developer in the start of my career for about 10 years. And since 80-ish years, I'm MySQL DBA. Currently, I'm a lead database consultant at Pythian. Ivan lives in Argentina in South America as a systems engineer. Uh, unfortunately, he also has left Pythian. is now a uh, uh, senior consultant at Percona. Um, this is something about Pythian, yeah. Uh, one disclaimer, I'm not going to um, claim here that I'm the uh, SL Linux guru. I'm just a DBA having to deal with SL Linux on systems that are managed by other people. And <laughs> this is the presentation goes about how we go about that and what we did and what we learned about dealing with those kind of situations. So let's get started with some introduction to what SL Linux is. So this is the definition you can find on Wikipedia. It's something because someone thought that the normal Linux uh, security system wasn't good enough. So on Linux you have the privileges for user groups and others. Um, but it's, it wasn't granular enough. It's originally developed by the NSA in America uh, and Red Hat. Um, and it's distributed to your kernel as a set of kernel modules for enhanced security or for bothering DBAs. <laughs> um, there are three modes to SA Linux, and it's very similar to what Nick earlier said in his presentation about proxy SQL. Um, the default mode is set to enforcing in Red Hat's Enterprise Linux and CentOS. Uh, you can set it to permissive or disabled. Permissive does what it says. It will track every, uh, all, all the, the settings for SA Linux, but it will allow them, but it will log them in the log file. And disabled will just completely disable SL Linux. And a wise man once said, every time you disable SL Linux, a kitten dies. <laughs> Think of the kittens. <laughs> um, the truth is, mostly the compliance or security teams will bite you if you disable it. Um, it's often a part of their audit trails. They want the, the logging at least, or they want to block everything they don't allow which is also the default policy. So there's a deny policy uh, for anything you don't specifically allow. Um, a useful tool on uh, a Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux-based system or CentOS-based system is policy core utils in Python. Uh, it provides a lot of tools to manage and define your SA Linux policies. If you want to go a little bit deeper and really start writing policies, the devil package gives you a lot more tools also. And how you can check it, so there's a tool, SA, SA status, and you can run that, and it will show you the current modes, like in this case, it was uh, enforcing, um, it's enabled, um, and these are the, the, the config directories. Uh, you can get enforced, uh, you can do get enforced to see what the status is of the enforcement, and remember the kittens here, because I made this, uh, this screenshot, I killed the kitten. Um, so SA Linux is defined by users, policy, context. Um, there's not a one-on-one -on -one mapping between uh, Linux users and SA Linux users. Uh, so the, the SA Linux users, by default here in this system, uh, you can get by SA minus user dash L, and then you get all the SA Linux users. You have guest, root, staff, and regular user. And you can then assign a login. So in this case, I, def I assigned user John to my uh, as user, uh, as a Linux user. And then you can see that this John user is, is there. And the default is that they are unconfined. So it's very uh, straightforward, uh, very easy to track or something. Yeah. Uh, and also, SA Linux adds a dash capital Z option to uh, commands like ls or ps. So you can see what um, uh, SA Linux uh, users and object uh, roles and the types it, it uses, and also for a process, you can see MySQL D is running as uh, the the type my, MySQL D underscore T, and MySQL D save is running as 
basically save uh, underscore t. And so the contexts are defined as user role type and then a level. Uh, the most use that I have seen from it is we're using user and type and role is usually like a system ob object or system R or something like that. A level is if you want to go even more granular, you can start doing like this user has access level to these SLMs levels and you can go up to um, more, more and more levels. But that takes us a bit too far if we... So, MySQL and SA Linux. Um, out of the box experience is that is so that everything works. So if you just install, yum install MySQL server, which gives you MariaDB server, or if you do uh, MySQL community server, uh, everything will work. So there's a, a module, pre a policy predefined. You can do uh, SA manage module L, and then you can grab for MySQL. So you see that the MySQL uh, object is, is there by default. And it's very granular. So, uh, granular. so you have uh, a lot of different types that are defined for different locations. So in, in the Etsy MySQL, it's, it's MySQL D Etsy. Then you have the log directory. The, the data directory has its own. Uh, the MySQL D process has its own uh, uh, context and everything. So it's, it's very granularly defined, and you can then start playing with it. So in this case, in this example, we wanted to change the, the data directory. So the default is Farlib MySQL, and somehow we were requested to put it on data MySQL. And so we, we made the directory, we gave it the permissions, and you can see here by default it's unconfined. Um, and we started MariaDB service and it didn't start. So what we used to do was turn SL Linux off and then it worked. <laughs> but remember the kittens. <laughs> uh, so there's an audit log. And if you install that, that, Python, that Python package that I referred to, you can do audit to allow. And w, uh, dash w and dash, w, dash a uh, will give you the list of things it's denied for you. So um, in this case, it says, I denied write to uh, the location. I, I tried writing with MySQL D uh, context, and you are writing to default D, so it's not allowed. And it's, it's true, because this is by default default type. And so you cannot write to that uh, with SL Linux enforced. Um, so we were then finding the right data directory context. So uh, on varlib MySQL, this is the default context. So we were trying to just set the context uh, to the, D the data directory context. And then we did an LS again. And hey, wait, we changed this, but it didn't change anything. So you still have to apply that if you change that. That's something we learned. If you do then restore con and dash v gives you useful output, so it shows you what it's actually changing, then it will start changing the, uh, the types. And now you can see that it has the right type. And if you now start the server or get the status, you can see that it's active running with the right data directory as you, as you were expecting to. So this is one way of dealing with it. Another thing is custom ports. So we had a running MySQL instance, and we just wanted to change this from 3206 to 3207. So what we did, added port equals 3207 to the MySQL D section of the config, restart it, and boom, it didn't start. Why didn't it start? So you check journal CTL, there's, it says it doesn't start. It has a failure, but it doesn't say why. The error log says permission denied. Do you have another process running on that port? No, we don't. <laughs> so obviously SL Linux was, was, was bothering us there. So again, if you do the audit log, you can see that it is trying to use an unreserved port. And it gives you a, a, a possible solution. So it says you, you allow a NIS enabled. And NIS enabled will allow a process to bind to any port. And so if you, if you set that uh, SA Linux Boolean, it starts. And it binds to the port. It works. But the compliance team may or may not like that level of freedom to give it to you. Um, so another way you can go about it is SA Linux manages the port. So if you do. If you grab the MySQL port uh, from port L uh, in SA Manage, you see that it has a number of ports predefined. 3206 is part of it. And you can just add 3207 to that list by doing SA Manage port A for add to the type MySQL D, uh, D, T port T. And then you give it TCP 3207. 
and then it adds it to that list, and then you can just restart the database server, and now it starts with port 307. So that is just uh, examples of, of things we run into while dealing with it, and how we try to work around it uh, without getting the compliance teams on our necks, or um, getting us uh, in trouble for, for disabling things, or set, um, changing booleans, uh, and all those kind of things. So another f friend of MySQL is, is Proxy SQL. Nick just presented about 2.0. Um, and we also use uh, uh, Proxy SQL quite often. And also, by default, it works. So if you have SLinux Linux status enabled, enforcing everything, uh, it works, it runs, but it's, also, uh, it's running as an unconfined service. And it's running with the default privileges for varlibt. Um, where the default type directory for proxy SQL is. Um, so, why should we bother? It works out of the box. In our case, the log rotation failed. So, we have log rotate rotating the proxy SQL logs, and if I run this as root, it worked. I defined my proxy SQL uh, log rotate uh, um, config, and I tested it, and everything worked. Until, I, until cron started running it. Cron runs, and it says, it starts, uh, I, sh I start uh, log rotate proxy SQL, and it exited abnormally with status one. So why? If we do the, the this default system has, is mailing to varlog mail root, and so it says error renaming my dot two log file to dot three. Why? It says permission denied. Uh, if, if, we, if we try it as root, it works, but if we try it in crontap, it doesn't. So it, it has root, we can just run the log rotate, we can get all the output, it does everything, everything works. But cron doesn't let us, so if we go back to that, this audit log uh, and we see um, there's, it, it tries to write this file, but it's, it's, it tries to rename this file, uh, so it, it's not allowed. So y in this case, you can use also the audit allow uh, tool to generate a proxy, uh, a policy for that. So if you do uh, audit to allow on, on the log file, so here is the, the same command we did for that audit log. This, this just prints the output on the, on the screen. Uh, if you do uh, dash m proxy SQL into a file, it generates this file for you. The problem is, in this case, it only generated for the one error it saw. So it saw one error, the rename, but there's multiple things that log rotate will do. It will create new files, it will rename files, it will delete files if, you ha if, it, if it, uh, they are expired. So it needs more privileges. So these are the commands you can do then to compile this .te file into an actual module file that you can load and package uh, before it gets loaded into the kernel. So at the end, you have the module loaded, uh, uh, version 1.0, which is the version we defined here. So if we define a different version there, it's, it gets a different version number down here. Um, so as I said, this only just allows for a rename. So more, more iterations of the same process are required to make this work. Um, an, an easy way, an easier way to, to get to this is to set SLNX temporarily to permissive, so you can see what it will do. It will allow, it will lock everything, and then you can run the process. Obviously, there's, uh, it doesn't do all the operations it might do in, the, in, in a single run. So if, in my case, I was only at my third or second or third iteration, and I want to keep five log files. So it only, uh, when it reaches the fifth log file, it will start deleting. So you have to run, make sure that you have the entire process that it will do. No. Oh, yeah, the, the question was, can you um, set uh, SLNX permissive only for a specific process? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, not as far as I know, but... Um, so if, if you then have the entire list of uh, things it can do in the audit log, then you can generate the, the full file that you end up with. And then it looks something like this, so it has access to the, those types, so the varlibt, logrotate, unreserved ports, 
uh, TCP Connect, uh, and then all those file actions. Uh, so it needs access to uh, port, uh, the admin port for Proxy SQL in order to flush the logs, uh, because otherwise Proxy SQL will just keep writing to the old log file. Um, and it needs all those privileges on the varlib proxy SQL directory to make sure that it can rotate the file. Um, in the end, it was a great success. We had no more errors. Our log rotate uh, in cron was running fine. We started rotating and everything started working. Thank you, Dave. Um, is this the best solution? Probably not. What would be a better solution, I think, would start to define proxy SQL's own SA Linux policy. So uh, the var uh, lib proxy SQL directory gets its own policy, gets the right privileges for uh, log rotate. Uh, but as I said, I'm not the big SA Linux expert, um, so I didn't get that far yet. My, maybe in some next project I will have to, and, and m maybe next year I can con come demonstrate how you generate <laughs> the, the SA Linux uh, policy for proxy SQL. But in this, in this case, this was enough for us. Uh, so we got uh, log rotate to, uh, to rotate. And in this case, now it has permission to do so on all the files in varlib, which is probably not what you want. But for this project, it was OK. Alternatives for uh, SL Linux, um, most well known is probably AppArmor, App which is the, the default in, in Ubuntu-based systems, I think. Um, and as uh, and, uh, and SUSE Linux, um, and then key differences is um, yeah you can see here uh, SL Linux supports a remote policy server. If you define it centrally, then it, all your servers get it, uh, which um, SL App Armor doesn't. And then there's some other tools which are less known, um, but I, when looking up alternatives, I found them, so I put them here. So, any questions? You said that the <coughs> Selinux uh, has uh, some good defaults for MySQL. Does it include the uh, port for MySQL X uh, and uh, the Not yet, I think. Not yet, I think. So the, the, does uh, the default uh, uh, policy include um, a port for MySQL X? I don't think it does yet. It m might, and there might be a feature request for that, but I don't know. And I think the policy has been is not managed by Oracle itself or by MariaDB, but I think it's managed by the kernel. Yeah, it's going to be a surprise if you use the default with MySQL 8 because MySQL X is uh, uh, enabled by default. Yeah, true. Sure. Show me. So the question was, when you uh, specified the port uh, to access, is there an option to include SSL? I don't know. Can the database, once you have set uh, AC Linux, uh, be after exported to a non-AC Linux environment, or you must unlock all features first and then migrate? So the question was, can you export a database after you set SSL Linux? Uh, I think you can. It's it just export it and um, to to anywhere you want. Uh, I think as root you will be able to write anywhere. Uh, so. Okay. Thank you.